Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to be doing a build guide for the Mistress Key 1.2. We have a couple of changes from the original Mistress Key design. Uh, the main changes that we have going on are mostly just small adjustments for print reliability and to stop you from having to clean things up as much after you print, the, print your parts. Uh, we also have an ambidextrous catch that is going to be available as an option for the 1.2. So the first step is to do our sub-assemblies for, for the Mistress Key. And I'm going to start with the catch mechanisms so you can see how to put both together. Uh, you'll use only one or the other. And the sub-assemblies don't really matter as far as order goes. It just makes it easier than trying to put things together a single part at a time. So we'll start with the original single-sided catch, the catch plate, the actual catch spring. One of the changes from the original version is instead of having a nub on the back of this, we have a little hole that the spring fits into, operates much more nicely. We have our catch button, which fits on just enough to where you don't have to hold it as much. And Phillips head screwdriver. And you can actually put the catch itself and the button on the side together before you actually put the catch into the body of the catch plate. But I've done this enough times that I'm used to holding it. And when you're putting the rod into the back, which you'll do once it's actually on the plate, you want to go ahead and push it a little bit, slide it in, make sure that, oh, see I did it backwards. And here we go. We want to make sure that when you actually push the catch in, it's the right side to where it'll catch and release. Do watch the spring flying out. I just lost mine there. We'll be actually building this one with the ambidextrous catch, so I'll show you that in a minute. All right. The ambidextrous catch plate is a little bit different. It's a different shape because we have to have it be a different shape to be able to push a button from either side. So on this one, we want to go ahead and put in our spring. The actual catch mechanism itself is a different shape, has a hole in the top of it, which our spring goes into, and we just want to make sure that our spring works in here. Set that back aside. We have two of these, one for each side. Put on our cap, one 440 screw. Oh, if I could actually get this started right. It's a little bit harder to do for camera than just to have it uh, on my desk. And of course, if you have an electric screwdriver or something, this will go faster. I just use a normal hand screwdriver and it works well enough. And there's one. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, It'll actually hold the screw for you pretty well. I just forgot this one was magnetic. <laughs> uh, when printing these parts, you do want to print the actual release pieces. This black piece and the actual catch that's U-shaped. You will want to print those at a high infill. I like to use 85%. And when you're assembling these, the spring should stay on one side fairly easily. Push up your catch, put it back down, and putting the other side in. 
and there we go. And when we actually put the pull rod in, the catch is now on top rather than on one side or the other. So when we assemble it, we'll be making sure that the notch for the catch is on top. And we'll set those aside for later here. All right, our next point is going to be the barrel. Uh, we still use short barrels for now. We are planning to offer a longer barrel because this 1.2 achieves a better seal than the original 1.0. Slide it all the way down. Take 1440. Put it into the hole on the one side, almost all the way. And do the same on the other side. And on this second one, I like to make sure that our barrel is nice and centered, hold it together a little bit, just to make sure we maintain good centering on it. And then tighten both of them down, make sure that our barrel is nice and secure. Then we take our safety cap. These are important. You know, we like to get shot with foam darts, not anything else. And we just apply pressure and slide that on. Don't want that falling off. It's there for safety. All right. Next up is going to be our plunger head. We want to get this ready. We take our padding and center it. And that just sticks down. Push it down a little bit extra. And we want to go ahead and pre-install these 440s that hold things together. Just a few turns in on each side is fine. Oop. Now if I could actually hold on to them. This is one of the parts that we did actually modify a bit so that it's easier to print. We found that when some folks printed the plunger head, they had too much elephant foot on their printers and they had to trim around this edge. We've added a chamfer to that edge so that you don't have to worry about that anymore. <clears throat> All right, now we have three different rods and another change that we've made with our kits and the parts we use from the 1.0 is we will use three lock, uh, locking nuts instead of just one. Start with our one that goes on the top and because we don't actually use the entirety of the threads, there's no problem holding this. Just take two pairs of pliers, just tighten this on a couple of times. You can actually use a pair of pliers and the correct size uh, 1032 wrench to actually put this on, but I find it's easier to just use your pliers. Now I'm going to do the same thing to our two longer rods that go in the bottom. We've also upgraded the tools that we use to file the ends of the rods a little bit so we make sure to have a nice smooth finish for the ends of the rods. And again, if you're using power tools, you might be able to do this a little bit quicker. I like the control of hand tools, and I find it doesn't take all that long. And we're actually done with this pair of pliers. All right, 
Now it's time to continue some of our sub-assemblies. I'm going to take this shroud that goes over this, I take our top rod, and now we are on to one of the parts that has had a major change. If you look down inside of this front piece, you can see that there is a ring of material that will go inside of our tube to help us provide a good seal at the front. The original design didn't include this because we didn't want too good of a seal because we don't want to have too much power coming out of these, but the original one is always available and this one will provide you a much better seal. And then our top rail. And that's the entire front section of this. We can set that aside again. All right. Now we take the catch that we're actually going to be using and our back plate, position them against each other. <clears throat> and we take our lower rods. assembly. We have our middle body, the catch plate of whichever style catch you're using, and the rear body. <clears throat> now, installing, <clears throat> excuse me, installing our pull rod, push just one side of the catch to insert your pull rod. Now we take our spring, and set it in there. Now we take our plunger head, and make sure that your screws are on the sides, and seat it firmly. That's, there's another change there that those of you who've built one of these may notice. That went together a lot nicer. There's a hint of wobble to it, but not enough to affect performance. We tighten these all the way down. and install the o-ring. Now to our plunger tube, we ship these with a lot more uh, silicone lubricant in there than we need to have. I'm going to actually take most of this out and set it aside. If we want a very, very tight seal at the front, we'll add a little bit to this front ring. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit. And that'll give us a very good seal at the front and just a little bit more and all around in the back. Now we take our tube, which has, um, this back edge does actually have a bit of a chamfer to it. Slide it on all the way down. Make sure that our rods are all the way seated. Make sure that we don't let anything pop open in the back right here between our catch plate and the actual back body. And we want to just slowly slide things together. You gotta wiggle it a little bit, but it goes together pretty well most of the time. All right. And then we take our normal nut and just and tighten it on all three spots. Now 
Make sure you don't cross thread it. It's kind of a pain if you do cross thread it. And then again, you can use the actual wrench that would be the right size, but pliers work just fine for tightening these up as well. And just medium tight, not too much pressure. It doesn't need to be ridiculous, just enough to hold it together well. There's three of these threaded rods. They do a good job. Uh, you may have noted that the spring that we actually used on this is a K25 and not the K26 that we have been using for most of the Mark I run. Uh, we found that there isn't a significant difference between the power produced by them at this size, especially for Mega Darts. And K25 is just a little bit easier to work with. And we're put together. And you can fire from either button. Uh, give me just a moment, I have to go grab a Mega Dart. A lot of power in this. Pretty loud. Uh, you can't actually push both buttons at once because they bump into each other. You can push one fully in or the other fully in to fire. And when you are ready to put it onto your blaster, slide it onto your rail. One retaining screw, two retaining screws. Put on your nut. And just tighten them down. We have it set up with this being a slot instead of simply a hole because if you have a more interesting blaster like a talon claw with parts from a V3 and a V4 or with one of the shrouds involved, it may not have perfectly lined up rails between the front section and the back section. And this allows you to mount it on whether or not the front, the, uh, the Picatinny rail is lined up in the front or the back. But yeah, there it is. Mistress Key, Mark 1.2. Thank you.